Seems like about time, let's get into it. So now when you first look at the screen here, you should see my screen shared. I am currently on our web browser platform. So technically at this time, we got four different platforms going on. We got our mobile platform that's for iOS and Android, which is great when you're on the go. We have our downloadable desktop platform. So when you're on your computer or laptop and you download the software, that's our desktop platform. We do that for Mac or PC. And then also we have our web browser trading platform. So we had our web 1.0, our original, what we're calling now our legacy web platform. You might've traded on there before at trade.tastytrade.com. If you go on our account management side and click on trading platform, you'll be taken there right now. But our brand new web platform that we're looking at on our screen right now is hosted at my.tastytrade.com. So eventually, you know, a lot of stuff is going to end up moving to this new domain at my.tastytrade.com. And you're going to start to see why. Some major things off the bat is that unlike our original web platform, you're going to be able to fund and manage your account and also get a, a much better snapshot of the dashboard, a historical net link chart, all that stuff within one platform without having to go through a bunch of different links or different pages, or, you know, for example, you're using the desktop and you got a fund on our website. You're able to do that all within one platform here on the new web browser platform. So first let's go over some layout and just kind of general functionality. For those of you that are familiar with our desktop platform, you're gonna see that it very, very closely mirrors the experience that we have on there. Right now we're just defaulted to the positions tab. But if you click on, and let me get my drawing tools here to help out, we have a left hand and right hand panel. So on the left side of our screen here, if I can get the drawing going, you see an arrow there in the top left You can click on that. And also any of these buttons on the right too, just keep your eyes on that for a second. So if we click on the arrow here in the top left, boom, clear off our drawing, we have our left hand watch list. So very similar. Um, what's the website for desktop platform session? Good question. So um, just to stop myself really quickly. So the desktop platform is a downloadable piece of software. You download it on our technology page. The web browser platform that we're on right now is something that you would type in in a web browser like Chrome or Safari. It's kind of that URL that you put at the top. So um, you download our desktop. This is our web platform. Little semantics, but just so you don't get confused, I saw some questions coming up in the chat. But so on our left side here, just for those who didn't see, there's a little arrow in the top where we can expand our watch list. Something you couldn't do on the desktop that you can do here is actually collapse the watch list as well. So if you don't want to view this left hand watch list, you can click on the arrow again and that collapse it off your screen. Very nice. Again, just kind of tailoring to whatever customization you want, what you want to see, maybe you have too much on the platform. And then on our left side here, you can click on this arrow here and you are going to get a expanded left side panel. So again, it was this arrow in the bottom left. If you want to go ahead and do that, I generally like to, you know, pop out my watch list at the start pop out my right left side menu so then I can see all the, the different tab names. And as we're clicking on different tabs here on the left side, this middle panel is gonna update based on the tab we have selected. So I'll show you all these tabs in a little bit, but as you can see, maybe we wanna check out a chart. We can go to our chart tab on the left here by clicking on chart. Once we do so, now in our middle panel is our chart. So. This is our kind of this left hand panel here is the navigation bar. Same functionality as our desktop platform. And I see uh, Tom might ask, do you re recommend desktop over web? As of right now, I would say definitely if you can stick to the desktop platform, it's got the most trading functionality and tools, all the order types, all that jazz. Um, definitely probably the most robust charting package as well. If you can download it, it's great. Um, the web platform or this new web platform catches up on a ton of those fronts and offers some things desktop doesn't. But generally, you know, say you're on the move, 
um, you're on vacation, you don't have access to your desktop where you can download it, that's where this web platform or the mobile platform come in with great help. Um, and then also too, you know, our web one was such a different experience and I can show you guys here in a second after showing the layout and navigation, but you know, jumping between platforms, it wasn't a very uniform experience now, no matter if you're on desktop or web, doesn't matter, you're going to have that same kind of experience where it's the same exact trading. So we have demos on our desktop platform and, um, you know, recordings on our YouTube channel, demos for all that, same with our web. So you can check that out. But for right now, we're just talking about this new web platform and some of the cool things that you can do on here. So we had our watch list on the left. And again, can't collapse the left hand watch list on the desktop platform. So, hey, good stuff there. Already some better customization or kind of layout customization here on the web. On our right side, just lastly, in terms of pieces that are on the platform, we have our overview panel. So the trade tabs split up into three sections. You might default here at the trading tab, or if you check out the top section here as well, see how we're on the trading tab there. So you might be on manage, you might be on dashboard, you might be on um, trading. You can go ahead and click on dashboard. So you might've started there and click on dashboard in the top left. And Chaim, I'll go over a list of, um, you know, upcoming features and features that might get caught up here at the end, just to kind of wrap it up in total, but uh, good question. And then we also have a great help center article that goes over a lot of the changes or discrepancies or things to look out for as you're going through. But right now we're looking at our dashboard. We recently added this to our desktop platform. Are you getting, did we lose sound there? Any, everyone still hear me? Duan, see you said no sound. Well, I'm going to keep going as if the sound's still working, hopefully. Okay, cool. Sounds good. You got me, um, but maybe check your sound settings. Okay, cool. Uh, so we are in the dashboard here. What's really nice is that um, if you're in the beta, you'd actually see that the dashboard is, uh, it came out on web first. So web's kind of been trailblazing on some of this new stuff, but it's really nice to start the day on your dashboard, check out how SPY or the market's been doing for the day. It's updated every 10 minutes. That little orange line is indicating, you know, what was that last tick? What was that last 10 minute interval? On the right side panel, what people have been looking for a lot is, hey, can I look at my net lick over a certain time period? This is our first iteration of it, is our net lick graph. You can check that out right here. So depending on the account you have selected here at the top, you're going to see your historical net liquidating value either on a over a day period, a week period, maybe over a year as well. So you can kind of see based on from a year ago, how's the net lick? been looking maybe we can change accounts here hasn't been the best year for me so uh <laughs> at least on the year we're, we're doing a little better earlier the year but uh you know we're looking at adding in some more time frames making it a little more customizable but a great feature that you can have on your dashboard maybe you want to see how's my account been doing for the day see how spies moving see how your account's been moving for the day you know it seems like we we might be a little net bearish here in the account because market went up but our net lick for the down one day went a little down. So what can you do? Let's clear our drawings. Underneath, you just have some applicable balances here. Eventually, you're going to see, you know, how many day trades you have. Also, your, you know, Greeks for your account as well. And then in the middle, just some general news updated every hour. You can refresh this if you want with the refresh button. So just general big news coming up, you know. SEC and Coinbase, some spicy stuff coming out, or Live Golf and, and uh, PGA as well. A lot of news coming out today. But um, we also have some applicable watch lists here at the bottom. We have tasty earnings. So you can check up symbols with earnings coming up. There's also uh, the dividend aristocrats watch list here. So these are uh, dividend symbols with dividends that, and they've increased their dividend payments over the past, I think it was 25 consecutive years. So then we have TSC fast movers. These are just kind of some more volatile underlyings. We have descriptions or glossary on all these items in our help center. I'm sure uh, Anthony and Jeff can help link out to that 
for all of you in just a second. So that's our dashboard, very simple. We're gonna keep adding stuff to it, but it's a good way to start your day. And then once you're done with it, all you need to do, if maybe you want to go back to the trading platform or something we'll talk about in a little bit is you know actually fund your account, um, you could go to the manage section. So in this case, let's just go to back to the trading platform. You know, We've looked at our account overview. Now we kind of want to get into some trading. Maybe first we want to filter through some symbols. So what kind of scanners, what kind of research can I get into on the web platform? So off the bat, this is kind of a basic thing across all of our platforms is the watch list tab. So if we wanted to see our tab names again, Click on this little expand button in the bottom left. So expand that out in the collapse menu. And we can see the watch list tab right here. So within the watch list tab, you can either see watch lists that we've made. So you could either, you know, if we, just for example purposes, if we click on the plus sign here, we go test watch list. We type in a couple symbols, maybe Costco. Apple in there. Got anyone else? Any other symbols people looking at? Let's toss in Spy. You can add all three of those to our new watch list. Click Save. And now we can see under our watch list drop down, we have, well, I use the same exact name as the last time I did this, but we have another test watch list in lowercase this time. So we have our test watch list here. Uh, I think actually it was the uppercase, so mixed them up there. But you can create your own watch list and continue to add in new symbols, maybe XOP, and you click on that little binocular icon here, and that will add it to your watch list as well. You can go through here and either select what columns you want in the platform settings. I'll show you in a second, but you can filter all of these columns here. Maybe let's just look at one of the preset watch lists. Like, let's check out everything in the technology industry. Maybe I want to see, hey, let's look at some stocks with high IV rank, but then also maybe I want to keep track of the liquidity rating. I want to make sure that I'm trading some liquid options. Well, I can filter this column here by IV rank, high to low. See XRX at the top, 33.9 IV rank. And now we can see the liquidity rating as well. So maybe, you know, if I'm just looking for some, I'm product indifferent, I'm looking for opportunities based on statistics, want to trade some liquid underlyings, you can go through and filter through preset watch lists, any watch lists that you've made, and check out based on these columns or columns that you set in the settings. I'll show you guys really quick how to do that. Click on the settings up here. And then go to watch list, center main. So that was under, let's see if I can draw here. Watch list, center main. Then we had all these watch, all these columns that we had on there. So you can drag and drop from display to not display back and forth. Maybe we want to see the dividend date coming up. We can add that on there. Maybe we want the earnings date as well. We can add that on there to our displayed side. I want to take off a few things. You can take off the bit and ask, Let's click X, get rid of our drawings there. Now, when we go to our watch list here, we can see now our earnings at our dividend at watch list is coming up. So once again, maybe you're trying to play, you like place in earnings trades or earnings play. And again, maybe product and different, just looking for opportunities. You can go through and filter through symbols and see, hey, what's got earnings coming up? What has dividends coming up? Kind of dividend risk, maybe if you're trading for short options. So watch list tab, very useful place to start just filtering through symbols. Once you've done that and you got a good idea, maybe we're interested in Apple and we're like, hey, you know what? This kind of fits my criteria based on how I was filtering things, maybe in the filters in the top right here too. Well, next we can check it out. We could either go back to our chart tab that we read earlier. Maybe I want to do some technical analysis or we can go to the research tab and do some fundamental analysis. So if we click on research here on our tab on the left. So it's this guy over here, research. Based on this symbol, your active symbol at the top, you're going to see research on that symbol. So right now we're looking at Ford. Maybe if I wanted to look at, eh, we can just keep Ford, why not? When we're looking at Ford, we're going to see some financials on a quarterly and annual basis, the revenue and net income, assets and liabilities, 
kind of basic data that we had earlier. But what's really great and what recently got on desktop too is we have a brand new ratios tab to check out all the other applicable ratios. A forecast section that's giving you an analyst consensus and also a target price for this underlying based on that analysis. We got individual news for this symbol as well. And then a nice about section. So if you want to get some background of, hey, what does this company actually do? What are the components? What kind of sector is it in? Also a financial summary too. I found this to be very, very insightful to get a kind of a snapshot over the past quarter or two quarters, even sometimes a year, it'll give a three to four sentence financial summary for the company, uh, all provided by our data provider refinitiv on that. You can also check out who's in the company as well. So you can see who's on the board. Some really interesting information. You know, maybe you don't need to know all these people's names, but to a point, you know, maybe some votes are coming up and you're seeing who's on the board. You're trying to you know, just get some more information, do some research on the company. You can find that all within the platform. You don't have to go out and, and do a web search to find out more on the company. So great research section. And then something I talked about that I want to go into a little more depth really quickly is the chart tab. So at its base, and I want you to kind of all listen to this closely off the bat here, is that the chart tab is very different, or not very different, but it's quite a little bit different than the desktop platform. It doesn't have all of the, it has some features that it doesn't have, but it also isn't completely like 100% built out with some of its little added tools and features. I'll show you in a second. For the most part, it works great, but I would still, if you're a technician, if you're doing a lot of, you know, I'm trying to think like essentially drawings or setting up indicators, definitely stick to the desktop platform for right now. We're going to have new releases coming out so that it's a lot more easier to save and make sure that all of your parameters that you're setting on your chart saves. It's a bit finicky with the web browser right now, but yeah, if you want to make sure that all that you're doing on your chart is saving and you're not going to run into any potential issues then stick to the desktop platform. So remember, I think it was Tom, you were asking about that earlier. Depends on what you're doing. If you're just doing straight up trading, you know, looking at a chart, not doing too much drawing, this is great, great screen. Uh, but you know, if you're doing a bunch of drawing, then stick to the desktop just for right now. While you're in the chart tab on our left side, you are going to have all of the drawings, all the applicable drawings. So, you know, you imagine you want to draw a trend line here. You can pick up two points, left click, left click. Now we have a drawing trend line. We can change the color of that trend line, change the fade there and the opacity. We can lock it in so that when we try and drag it, it doesn't move anymore. Or we can go into the settings as well and change a lot of the parameters. So for those of you doing some more complex drawings like Fibonacci retracements, you might want to yeah. Oh, uh, good questions. Are you covering the trade tab? Yes, uh, we are going to very, very shortly. So good questions. Um, we're just going to talk about the chart tab really quickly because it might be a little bit of a different experience. The trade tab, which is fantastic, is almost a one-to-one -one experience with our desktop platform. So show you that, guys, in a second. But just for the chart tab, you got all your drawings here. You can go through, you can clear your drawings, right-click, get rid of the drawings if you want get rid of the zoom. And then some important things to note at the top, you're going to select your aggregation. So this is picking which data point or essentially each candle, each tick, how much time is that tick representing? So right now, each tick that we're seeing right now is one hour's worth of data. If we wanted to look at daily data, we can see that there. And then when you scroll your mouse up and down, that's going to expand the time frame. So normally when you're on the desktop platform or any of our other platforms, you're picking an aggregation and a time period. In this case on the web, you're just picking the aggregation, what the tick actually, what the tick time period is. The length of how much you're seeing on the chart is just gonna be dictated by how much you're zoomed in, you know, how zoomed in you are on your web browser or you know, using the scroll wheel, kind of pushing in and out, oops, um, will work on that. So. That's nice. And then we also have our candle types next to that too. So if we wanted to change our chart type, maybe do a little bit of a line graph, you can do that there. 
we wanted to add in any indicators, that's this little F icon here. So maybe if we wanted to add in, we got MACD on here. Yep. Some indicators aren't on here yet, but we're looking at getting all of them very, very soon. So you could add that there and add the study drag and drop over to the right, drag left and right. And that'll add it to our chart here at the bottom. And you can change around with the parameters, kind of go back in and add on multiple if you want to. And then something that you might notice as well, and we will have some documentation up on here as well, but web is going to open up the opportunity to be able to script um, your own indicators in the future too. So very nice stuff, some stuff that you can't do on the desktop platform right now, but is on web. So one more piece that I think a lot of you should definitely, you know, again, if you're playing around with web or just have it open another platform is this compare function here. So let me get rid of MACD here below. The compare function here, this little chart or, you know, line with the plus next to it. Right now we're looking at Ford. Let's clear this out. But if we wanted to compare the price of Ford over this time frame, let's get it back to candle. We clicked on this button right here and we wanted to compare it to the price in SPY over this time frame. We can type in SPY, click on it, and now we're going to see a comparison SPY in terms of percentages because, you know, they're working off of different prices. But now you can compare multiple symbols to whatever your active symbol is on the platform. So, oops, clicked on the wrong one there. But if we want to look at SPY, maybe I'm trying to think of... Another publicly traded car company. Well, if you say maybe just Costco, I don't know. Compared to some consumer stuff here, you can compare all these different underlines with multiple lines. So very useful charting feature to keep a track of just to show you where that button was. It was this guy right here. So there's some other tools and functionally at the top here. A lot of this stuff, it's related to saving on the platform, changing the orientation. Again, it's still kind of getting worked out on, uh, so it can be just a little tiny bit buggy, uh, but you can stick to the desktop platform if it's not working for you in the meantime, but you know that compare functionality, some of the drawing tools, just the look and styling, some of you might prefer it over desktop, or if you don't have access to the downloadable desktop platform, good place to go. So that was our chart tab. Thank you for bearing with me through it. It's definitely a little bit of a different experience than our other platforms but let's go to the trade tab. So let's talk about placing a stock and options order. So if we go to the trade tab here in our navigation bar on the left, if you don't see all the names, click on the collapse menu in the bottom left and you're gonna see all your names on the left side and go to the trade tab. So one thing to note off the bat, now that we've expanded our left side panel too, is take a look at this section right here on the left. This is gonna show you all your open accounts if you have multiple accounts open, you want to check and see which account has this T shield lit up. That's going to be your default account when you go to place a trade. So if I were to try and buy stock right now and I entered an order ticket to buy stock, it would default to my account ending in 08, this pink guy over here. But if I wanted to change that and say, hey, when I go to place a trade, I want it to default to the purple account ending in 01. I can click or double click on the T-Shield there and now it's my default account. Show you guys how that pops up in our order ticket a little bit later. You can always change that at a later time if you need to. So right now we are in the trade tab taken to the options trading mode. That's this whole section right here. So the options table, and it might not be expanded for you, so let me make sure I click that there. The options table is going to list for your active symbol at the top of the platform. So right now we're looking at the options table on Ford. If we were to type in, say, TSM, we could type it in at the top of the platform, click on it, or press enter, and now a TSM, Taiwan Semiconductors, is our active symbol, and we see the table or all the options chains for TSM. If we're clicking through symbols on our left side watch list as well, maybe AMD, now it's our active symbol, and we see the options chain for that. So if you're filtering through quite a few different options chains, it might be nice to have your watch list open, or you can just keep typing it in at the top of the platform. While you're in here and something that I like to show off really quickly, go back to TSM, 
is that within the trade table, you can actually check out, hey, is there any upcoming dividends on this underlying or as well earnings too? So that purple earnings line saying, hey, we got an earnings announcement on July 13th or the purple D line, a dividend date on or ex dividend date of June 15th. It's all applicable visual information that you can check as you're looking to set up a trade. We see our days until expiration for all these, the actual date for the expiration. And then if you don't see weekly expirations right now and only see monthly or vice versa, check out the setting in the top right of the tab just to make sure that you have all expirations selected. It's a good place to start. If you don't care for the weekly expirations, then you can just click on regular expirations only. You're gonna see all the monthly expirations for TSM right now. Great. So if we wanted to place an options trade, maybe just to show it off really quick, quick, let's talk about a stock trade. And we actually have three minutes here in the extended hour session. So let's see if we can fire off an order. Maybe let's do it on Ford. So while you're in the trade tab, if you click on single, this is where you can go to place a stock order. Additionally, if you're anywhere on the platform and you click on the ask price, so maybe you click on the ask price for Ford at the top of the platform, it's going to take you to that same exact window where you're in single mode. Here, you're going to be shown a chart at the top while you're able to place your order ticket. And at the bottom, we have our classic order ticket, just like the rest of our platforms where you can either buy or sell, Oops. mess around with the quantity, the order type and time and force. So in this case, since we are in the extended hour session, which is 3 to 4 p.m. Central Time, we need to send this order as an extended hour order. Let's place it at the ask right now, it's just so we get a fill for example purposes. So we type in a new price or we can use our arrows to adjust the price too. And once we're good with our order and we're liking it, we can go ahead and click on review and send at the bottom. We'll see which account we're placing the trade in. Got one more minute left, gotta go quick. Uh, we got our account that we're placing a trade in. So we defaulted to that purple account. And then we also have a breakdown on our entire trade, you know, cost, the type of order, commissions and fees that we might pay, the market for the underlying, our buying power, all that jazz right there. Maybe if you hate this order and completely had no idea what you're thinking about, you can click on edit, go back, change the order, cancel it, or let's go ahead and set Submit, submit this order. Let's buy one share in Ford. So we can click on submit. And now we have a working order in Ford and we got filled, which is great. So now too, if you wanted to see that on our right side panel, you see that we have a position in Ford now, or we had our filled order in Ford. If we go to our positions tab two, really quickly, so I clicked on positions up here and now we can see the little purple icon, we got one share in Ford in our purple account. Ooh. So that's how you can buy shares, very nice. I think the, the ability to have that chart in front of you is, is super, super nice. Right now on the desktop platform, you always have that options chain whenever you open up a stock order. So really nice functionality in the trade tab under single mode, if you're trading stocks, ETFs or outright futures as well, same dealio. Maybe if you're trading S&P futures, you type in slash ES, and then same thing, once you're in single mode, that's when you're trading the outrights. Now, once again, with equities or futures, once you wanna trade the options and you have your active symbol at the top of the platform, all you gotta do is just click on options. And then Sarah, I see your question. So positions tab is a combination of all accounts and not just default, great question. So I'll show you how you can actually customize that. By default, yes. Uh, it's just going to show you all the accounts you have open. Sometimes if you see, so in this case, imagine we had a share in Ford in our pink account. You'd actually see like kind of a combined symbol here where it had the purple circle and pink triangle showing that you, hey, you got positions on the symbol in two different account types. But if you were to click on this box here on the left side and you just wanted to see positions in our purple account, click on this box here. And now we only have our purple account selected in the positions tab, vice versa. If we didn't want to view purple and only pink, we can click on pink. And then, you know, if we want to view both, we could click both. So it's so either click, click all 
or click none and it'll show all of them or you can filter specific ones. So great question. Thank you for asking. Hope that helped. Let's just go back to the trade tab. Sorry, I got a little sidetracked there, folks. But once we are in the options train, chain, and let's just stay out of futures for right now. Might just add some confusion for some folks. But we are looking at the options chain on TSM. When we open up any of these expirations, so maybe uh, I always like to talk about maybe an earnings play. We'll check out the expiration right after the earnings announcement, which would be the July 14th expiration. 38 days out, so right under this purple line here. You can also see the implied volatility and expected move. So the options pricing right now, it's, it's telling us that the expected move for this 38 days or essentially kind of like after this earnings is eight, about eight points up and down. If we expand the expiration here. Beautiful, and my laptop doesn't want to lag on me you will get the entire options range showing you all the strikes for this expiration. And then we were just talking about that expected move as well. You can see that one standard deviation expected move here as this orange bar on the right. So again, you're working off of expected moves, probabilities, visual way to set up your trade here. Maybe we are thinking about placing a strangle where we're profiting or a short strangle where we're profiting as long as the underlying stays or trades between our strikes throughout expiration or you know maybe some other factors but essentially we kind of want the price of the underlying to stay the same if we trade that strategy you can do that by either using the strategy selector tool so we can set up a trade with this tool up here or we can actually just click on the bid and ask buttons like our desktop platform so see a question can you customize the columns in the positions tab I'll show you in a second, but also can you customize the columns in the trade tab? Yes, at the top, you click on the headers here and you can customize all the different columns here, depending on your screen's resolution. If you've got a, a much bigger screen, you are going to be able to add in some extra columns and you can customize, maybe you wanna check out the open interest in volume, see what kind of liquidity we're looking like on this expiration and at this strike, check that out there under those columns kind of filter based on what you want to see. And then in terms of setting up the trade, like I was talking about the strategy selector here at the top of the platform, right here, if you go to the strategy selector, you click on the drop down. This is great for new traders that are, you know, maybe a little less confident and knowing, hey, where do I set up this leg if I want to do this? In the case of a short strangle, we're selling a column, we're selling a put out of the money. We can click on short strangle and click on the strangle button here, or we can toggle and go, maybe we want a long strangle, short. I'm just clicking, left clicking there on short or long next to strangle. And once we're ready to place the trade, you can click on the strangle button. And that's gonna set up a default order, just kind of pretty close to at the money. While we're in here, like our other platforms, there's drag and drop technology here where you can just drag and drop to your strike. Maybe we wanna place our strikes right outside the expected move. We're kind of placing on probabilities. We're thinking, hey, you know, based on my own research, just for example purposes here, like, you know, I think it might not trade too much after earnings, who knows? Um, I will set up a delta neutral strategy or somewhat delta neutral strategy here that profits from little price movement in the underlying. So I'll set that up outside the expected move. And we can see here, as I'm adjusting my trades, on the left side here of the trade tab, you see the red and green area here. That's showing me my profit and loss zones at expiration, depending on where TSM in this case expires. So if TSM were to expire at a price of 112 or higher, if I place this trade right now, then uh, you know I would probably be at a loss at expiration there. Same goes if it expired, say, at a price of 105. If I open this trade right now, I'd probably be at a profit. So. Good information then you can also see hey where's my break even at? it looks like right about between like you know 110 111 somewhere in there and you can drag and drop and you'll see that these lines on the left that profit loss zone is updating in real time as we're dragging our trade two at the bottom of our window just like the rest of our platforms we have all the applicable creeks and inf information on the trade updating in real time we're gonna see our max profit and then also our max loss on the trade. Strangle's a little bit riskier, infinite loss, so be careful. 
but uh, we also have our buying power effect here and then our trade breakdown too. So we can see that we're selling a 108 call, we're selling a 98 put to net credit because we're selling to open and we're sending it as a day order. Market's closed right now, but we could start working this the next market session. If we wanted to, we can click on review and send. Just like our stock order, we get our confirmation screen here, make sure it's doing what we wanted to do. Looks great. Our price is great. I'm good with 405. We can click on submit. Now we have our working order on TSM. We see that show up on our right side panel here. Also, if we were in activity on the right side panel, it pops up there. But we also, again, just looping back to that positions tab. If you go here, you're going to see your working orders as well. You can click on your working order, right click, or just you know select multiple legs here with left clicks and then click to replace. Maybe if you wanna change the price, click cancel if you wanna cancel the order. Maybe if you weren't getting a fill and you're like, I'll place mine at a slightly lower price, maybe from 4.05 to four, I clicked on replace there and then sent as four. And we're out of that past order and working our new one. So very nice. And then also on this right side panel, if we right click, you can make any adjustments on your order too. So just like our desktop platform, we have an order chains tab here. This is great for keeping track of any previous roles in your account. So if you open up a trade here, I think go with a little butterfly going on here. Um, we had a roll on it and we had a, you know, one closing leg and we we're opening up another. It's like, what's going on with this position over the course of the trade? The order chains tab is very, very nice. Something we have on our desktop platform that we now have on web. So that is an options trade and also a stock trade. If we then wanted to, you know, reconcile our profit or losses, we could go to the history tab here on the left and get a breakdown of all the transactions that we just made. We can see the share that we bought, um, or, you know, we can go back to the past and see, hey, you know, what kind of profit or losses was I getting from before? Maybe I can check out where on May 31st, I bought 100 shares for $12 and then I sold them for 1202. In the top right, now that I have these two legs selected, you can see that the net amount I profited was two bucks and didn't pay anything in commissions and a little bit of password fees. So nice feature to reconcile any closed positions. You can also check out the Tasty Live live stream. Pop that up here. Might have gotten an error just because my laptop's being a little finicky right now, but essentially you should be able to pull up the live stream here. And you can also move it picture in picture. So Yoshi, can we see the risk profile or curve mode for a position? Great question. Let me go back, my friend, for you. That's also one piece I want to talk about too. So we do have a, let's pull up that trade we had earlier on TSM or something similar. Let's just uh, let's cancel that bad boy and click similar, launch back up. And then if you go to table mode, so this isn't exactly what you're looking for. And we're going to add this in a future update very soon, but in trade mode, you can go to curve and this is the horizontal view of the trade that you might see on the desktop platform. Slightly better for seeing the risk profiles, but still not that full risk graph that you might expect or want um, on, that you see on our desktop platform when you go under analysis mode. So that's a feature that's coming very soon. If you're looking for it, uh, go to the desktop platform right now, but that is a feature that we're adding. And that is essentially, lastly, we do have our manage section here. I can potentially cover here. Um, let me pull this up for a second. Sorry. I think I got a couple of, let's see. Okay, that's fine. I can show that. 
just had some account numbers listing. But uh, if you were in the manage section here, you can go and either, you know, make any deposits under my money, check out your confirmations and account statements, change anything under your profile. So that's what makes web a, a very, very nice experience is that you can kind of open up the platform, check out your dashboard, check the performance of your account. Maybe you need some more funds. You can go to the manage section, make a deposit, release some buying power if you can, and then go to the trading platform and start firing off some trades. Whereas, you know, an experience before you might have to jump around or have your own Excel sheet, keeping track of your performance. So it's end of the day, just less clicks, trying to make your guys' life a little bit easier as you're navigating on the platform. Uh, see some questions come in. Do you guys have paper money accounts? So we don't have demo accounts or, uh, you know, paper trading accounts essentially as of right now, something we might look to add down the line, but not anytime soon. We do have a open API with a open sandbox environment for testing too. So technically we have paper trading for automated trading accounts through our open API, but in terms of a, you know, you open up the platform and you log into a paper trading account, just like your real account and start firing off trades. We don't have something like that as of right now, but we'll be sure to pass it on to our management development team. We know that's a very heavily requested feature, but I mean, even to point to just like from the standpoint of using a demo or paper trading account, it's great to like use that to get familiar with a platform or technology or how, how does it feel to replace or cancel an order? But something, at least in terms of like, if you're back testing your strategies or seeing, oh, can I actually profit from what I'm doing here? You know, you, you kind of got to take paper trading accounts with a grain of salt because you're always going to end up getting filled at the mid price in a paper trading account. And when trading's actually live, depending on how liquid of an underlying you're trading, you know, where it is in the market, it might, you know, you're probably not going to get filled right at the mid. You might get better than the mid. You might get worse, or you might not get filled at all. Whereas in a demo account, paper trading account, you're going to get filled right away because it's just based off of, you know, whatever the visual numbers listing there. So it can kind of give you that false sense of success, possibly, if you, you know, in a paper trading account, if it looks like you're actually making some money in the paper trading environment, in reality, it might not work at all. So, and that's something that you could test out with paper trading, but that's just kind of the, the flip side where it, it can be really great, but it can also be somewhat detrimental as well. So we're someone we're looking into. Hope that was a good answer for you, Tom. But um, yeah, at least, you know, you don't have to fund an account to open up the platform and play around with it though. So that's kind of how we like to, the motto of the uh, Tasty Life of, you know, trade small, trade often. So, um, you know, if you're trading a smaller account, maybe it's uh, slightly less risky from a allocation standpoint, something like that. Matthew, can you compare your performance to something like the S&P 500 over time? As of right now, no, but that is a fantastic idea. And I think, like I was talking about in our dashboard section here, this was a something that we added to web in its beta a little while back, and we just added it to desktop, but it's its first iteration. So in our next release, I'm sure this is gonna get a, a much bigger bolstering update, which allows you to do it on better timeframes. Also, you know, compare to SPY. Essentially it'd be like, hey, I wanna look at my historic, well now, of course my chart doesn't wanna load right now because Zoom's lagging my computer, but you know, relaying this, this market snapshot for the day, compared to your daily net like or hey i want spy over a year compared to my account too so we'll be able to pass that on um any ideas for multiple factor authentication for logins that's something that we've considered too good question uh as of right now no i haven't heard of any recent plans for it but we do have two-factor authentication and whenever it comes to security guards on your account we have a very robust system in terms of you know, tracking the user traffic, can't go into too much details, but essentially it's, we have some pretty darn good security. So uh, in terms of login, stuff like that, you know, uh, you have your 2FA and whenever 2FA is requested, like when you're making withdrawal, trying to link a bank account or change your password. So kind of those main points of concerns, that's where you'll need multi-factor authentication. So great question, my friend. Thank you. Um, can you go to the church? Sure, the best 
So, Duan, good question. Um, if you're talking about the charts here, I don't know if you're talking about on like the chart tab or on the trade tab, if you're talking about the Greeks. Maybe you can go into a little more detail. Sorry, my friend. I'm not sure if I uh, fully understand. I'll check out serious listeners. Yes, so Sarah, good question. There is something called beta weighted delta that we have on the desktop platform. Um, you will be able to eventually, like, or you can on desktop right now, but essentially you can correlate your entire portfolio's deltas to a specific symbol, in this case, like SPY. Um, chain, customizing columns in the positions tab. Gotcha, my friend. So to do that, if you want to customize your positions tab column. So right now we got theta and delta, bid and ask, IV rank. If you wanted to change that, you can go to settings here at the top. So the settings gear icon. And then when you go to positions and then just columns. And on our left side is our not displayed columns. And on the right side are, or, sorry, I had that backwards. Our left side is displayed. Our right side is not displayed. So looks like my brain is not displaying right now, that's for certain. So you can drag uh, columns from the right side to the left to go to displayed and show up. So maybe if we wanna see the probability of profit or the p &L day to p &L open, we can drag all these to the top here and it's in ascending order. And then you can, so in this too, you know, if you're just starting out looking for some good columns, PL open, PL day is great. Checking out your Greeks, net, delta, net theta and delta. I also like to look at trade price, IV rank. Underlying indicators will show you any upcoming earnings and dividends. So, another great column to have on the positions tab. And then, um, you know, you got a lot of other stuff here that you can add in to kind of tailor to your experience. But these are definitely some that I just like to start with off the bat um, that are that are quite useful. So good stuff there. Uh, Matthew, good question, my friend. So in terms of dividend reinvesting, you can, if you want to make individual elections on specific securities, you'd have to reach out manually. Our election right now is just on an account, entire account basis, but you can, you know, shoot us an email at support at tastytrade.com and you will be able to, um, you know, kind of essentially ask, you know, hey, can I turn on drip or dividend reinvesting for this security only? Don't want it for this one. You can, you can make sure you have those elections set. Uh, some, and there's one caveat that I just want to say is that some underlyings, even if you're not like uh, dividend reinvested, will do it automatically because it's a stipulation within their prospectus or within the press release that they sent out. So kind of depends on what the company is doing. It's a case by case basis, but for the most part, you can you know get that all squared away, especially if it's you know some pretty popular underlyings there. So great questions. Um, any more questions before I end it, folks? I know some of you were asking, hey, is there recording? Yes. We post it to our YouTube channel and we follow up via email after two with a link to it. So check that out there. I also uh, posted a, a demo, just kind of a, similar to what we did here, just maybe a little more condensed formal uh, on the YouTube, on the new web platform. So if you wanna check that out in the meantime, but um, yeah, really great platform. I know I also wanted to talk about some things that were coming down the line. So some things on the web platform, that you might not see that are coming down the line. So we're going to have multiple customizable symbols for our snapshot here. So you can toss in multiple symbols on this graph at the top. In trading, we're going to we're getting really close to adding in custom grouping. So you can group your positions as you see fit in the positions tab. No longer do you have to always do by symbol or order chains. Group it how you want. And then we also have the account headers. So that's where someone was asking, where do I see my net account Delta or Theta? That header is gonna get added here in probably a week or so. So keep your eyes peeled. In terms of the trading platform, some things that are getting added, bracket orders, 
quote alerts, the analysis mode or the you know risk profile that someone was asking about earlier, the ability to or essentially you know fixing all any issues with uh, saving your settings on the charts, a journal feature as well. So I know some of you that loved our Web 1.0 feature or Web 1.0 platform trade.tastytrade.com that had a journal feature. Uh, so that's something that we're also looking at adding in Web 2. We also have uh, the manually scripted studies and indicators. And then, especially if you're looking into pattern day trading, you're looking for your day trades, that number is getting added to the platform as well. And then in terms of the management page, you may not be able to make IRA deposits as of right now on the web platform, but you can essentially do everything else. Uh, so if you run into issues, you can always go to manage.tastytrade.com. It's essentially when you sign in on our main website, like tastytrade.com or www.tastytrade.com, you sign in, that's going to take you to manage.tastytrade.com where you can make an IRA deposit or whatever. So end of the day, if you run into any issues here on the new web platform, either be funding account transfers or just order types, trading, defer to the desktop platform, defer to manage.tastytrade.com to manage your accounts. A lot of this, these new features and functionalities are still, you know, just getting some of those last irons, um, getting caught up. But, you know, once this beast is done, it's there's not going to be a lot to compare to. Uh, it's, it's really, really nice. And it's getting more updates every day. So thank you so much all for your time. We'll be in contact soon with the download. Thank you so much, Jeff and Anthony, for being on chats. And really appreciate all your guys' time and interest in the platform. Uh, feel free to reach out to our support at any time. We're open book. You know, I always get so tired of calling. You know, I'll call all the brokers and sit on the phone for forever. And it's and then you get forwarded to another person. You know, everyone on our desk here is is knowledgeable across all parts of our industry. We're gonna know and be able to get you an answer right away. So feel free to reach out. Have a good one, everyone. Nice night. And we will catch you very, very soon.